They're playing Simmons. Is this the title? We love that. Now, basketball is my favorite sport. I thoroughly enjoy watching them dribble up and down the court, but that is not the point for today. The point is, I love sports movies. Ever since I was a kid, there's something about them that just grips me. I think it's the sense of comfort that they provide. You know, they're relatively low risk, usually quite predictable, and also exciting and fun. And I love that. Now, one of my favorite movies as a kid in the sports realm of things was Like Mike. You had NBA, my favorite league. You had Little Bow Wow. I'm going to call him Bow Wow. Also, you had a lot of sports references. It was everything I wanted as a kid. But is it everything I still want in a movie as an adult? I guess all we can really do is see how it's aged. Now, Like Mike starts with a wonderful 20th Holy 20th Century Fox logo, and then BAM! There's Bow Wow's face and an introduction to your main characters in this movie. We have Calvin Cambridge, who already is showing you all his skill layups, got the 360. He looks like Mike already. But you also have his two best friends, Reg and Murph who you'll come to know and love throughout this film. Now, also within this introduction, we get to see where they live in this orphanage home. We get introduced to the villains, the main one being the bully. Hey, Paul. Or Todd from Breaking Bad. No spoilers, but Todd is the absolute Worse. So I went into this already really disliking that character, but of course, it's a kid's film. He has a redemption arc. Now, also, we get to see some NBA references just off the top. I mean, Kobe went game. back down from no challenge. Allen Iverson went back down from no challenge. And Michael Jordan Shorsack is not backing down from no challenge. And Showing that Calvin, Murph, and Reg do have a lot of knowledge about the game. This is really cool to see as an avid NBA fan. Because a lot of these references still hold true with some characters in the league that we know and love. <laughs> Todd's just got to stop. don't make these things for normal-sized people, you know? So after being infuriated by Todd, we get introduced to another villain who I'm going to call Voldemort because I don't want to say his name because he is absolutely evil to his core. The boy who lived. So Voldemort has the kids working, selling chocolate bars outside of the LA Knights game. So the Knights are a fictitious team that, of course, they had to use while still having all of these wonderful NBA references. So here we get to see Calvin and Murph watching the game on the big screen and showing more of their knowledge. And also, what, what was, was Tracy, Tracy Reynolds thinking? thinking? Oh, so it's great to see Calvin showing this basketball knowledge and even going to talk to the coach of the Knights to share some ideas for the team. You diagrammed the perfect play. Sure, Harrison didn't set the low pick, but why didn't Tracy pass the ball? This leads to the coach giving Calvin some tickets to the next game. Really? And that's when things start to get exciting. But also, this is where we start to learn more about the story within Like Mike. We get to see the adoption process, and we get to have some emotional moments. Like Mike does carry a lot of emotional value throughout the film. I mean, face it, we're like dogs. And I think that's what makes it still hold strong in the modern age. After having our heartstrings tugged at, we get the moment. This is your Cinderella moment with Calvin getting supposedly Michael Jordan's shoes, which is super cool, super coincidental, but this is where they fit like a glove, and the story really starts to kick into gear. Hey, 
Did Man, you, you say, uh, Michael, Michael Jordan? Jordan? Yeah, I said Michael Jordan. Give him back. Which could be Come anybody. Why don't you just let me And this just shows Todd is his, the worst. Man. Like, Man, how do you know why did he have to steal the shoes? No gives throw us... them onto a cable. No it's... stupid but it will lead to this sick transition and also some sick filming and cinematography that allows these shoes to gain their special power and allow Calvin to be so now after getting these shoes and probably should have died with this electricity and he probably should have died getting struck by lightning and falling from probably 30 feet or so but that's okay, we'll suspend our belief for a little bit. We get to go to the LA Knights game. Eugene Levy, by the way. Now, basketball is the best part of this movie and the relationships that are formed by all characters. But the basketball is really well done with a lot of cameos from a lot of stars of the time and also the networks that cover the game. Now, this is our big ticket moment. We're watching the game. Calvin gets called onto the court to play Tracy in a one-on-one. -on -one. But the most iconic line, he bends down to tie up his shoelace and he asks his shoes to make me like Mike. Of course they do. Whoa. And then we get the very cartoonish movie moment of Calvin doing an off the backboard alley-oop slam and the crowd goes silent. I did not. I laughed because it's just hilarious. And I know it looks horrible. I don't know. It's fun. Like, of course, this kid's not going to be doing that. CGI wasn't that great. All right. After this showing at the halftime show, we get a contract for one day for Calvin to come play on the nights. <laughs> Impossible, but cool. Whatever. And this is where we get to see Voldemort's greed. Voldemort is evil. All he wants come is money. And he's going to get some, signing this contract for a few thousand dollars for Calvin to play, play in one game. So now, going into game one, Calvin has an emotional discussion with the coach that he's not actually going to be playing. Coach, I have a lot of friends here tonight, and uh, I was just wondering, wondering, am I here to play, or am I just here for show? So after we see the Admiral just stuffing people's faces, the Knights are getting absolutely defeated. Calvin decides to, you know, ask the coach if they could run a play. For us tonight. I have an idea. Oh. I I've been watching. And they're vulnerable from the weak side, especially to a pick set away from the hoop. And the coach decides to put him in to run the play. Fine. Anderson, you're out. Tracy, you take Anderson's slot. Calvin, you take the shot. So Calvin runs, gets his shoes, puts them on, and they make him like Mike. And of course, he scores. He scores again. He posterizes Bruh. David Robinson, which is just nobody does that. And then he scores a buzzer beater for the win. Good! The Knights win! All in one game. It's just gets you hooked right away. You want to see the kid go off and he goes off. And then we also get to see more evil Voldemort behavior. Oh, wait a minute. Forbids it? Oh, yeah. Uh, didn't I tell you? Uh, I signed your contract as your guardian. So um, as long as you're playing for the Knights. The Count Change. This is where we get serious and an introduction into our wonderful dynamic with... Calvin and Tracy, which is my favorite part of the movie. It's gonna be so cool rooming together. Uh, my boy Merce is a snore. I think it's to be tripping sometimes. Maybe we can rent NBA Street. Now we get into some more basketball action with some wonderful montages and an AI cameo, one of many NBA player cameos. Oh, Mr. Harvison, sir. Uh, you're one of my favorite players. Who are you, the mascot? We get the greatest song of all time as well. 
little bit of the MJ Shrug, Jason Kid, more NBA TV integration, T Mac, more fun dynamic between Tracy and Calvin. We get Dirk asking for an autograph, probably the funniest part of the movie as well. Hey, Calvin. Listen, man, uh, can I get your autograph? Sure, Dirk. Uh, actually, for my niece. What's her name? Uh, it's uh, Dirk. And then Tracy starting to like Calvin. This is another one of those tropes, though. We get that wonderful montage to kind of tie everything together and also advance the story a little bit, which I don't mind in a sports movie like this. We do get to see some more fun moments with a little DMX car dance off. Y'all gonna make me lose my mind. Oh, bitch. What? What? And also... Tracy. Calvin having to drive for an overdosed sleeping pill induced Tracy. This bond forming starting to get Murph a little salty. Who are all those people? Parents. Here to see you. What's wrong, Murph? I mean, that's a good thing, right? Good for you. Doesn't do us any good. Murph. Congratulations. Go get adopted. Now, this is where the main villain starts to get more terrifying. Just like, look, look at that grip on the phone. It's just, yeah. But this part, it's so good. A little montage of all the prospective great parents to adopt Calvin. And look in the background, you have Mr. Villain himself. I'm never saying his name. He's like Lord Voldemort for me, all right? Just in the background, blurry watching over all of these interviews. It's hilarious, and it's shot so well. Now this moment. You see, Calvin, you're best off here with me. Sh shivers, literal shivers, terrifying. And I love how quickly the resolution with Murph being salty comes to fruition here, with Murph just coming to chill with Calvin and Tracy and seeing just how much their relationship means to Calvin, where we get to appreciate the music usage in this film. Most scenes, especially with Calvin and Tracy, are accompanied by a soundtrack, and this really adds to the emotional value behind each scene with them together. I'm just playing a game. Playing a game. I love the usage of this soundtrack, especially since some of the music is Bow Wow's. It's just a really great way to tie everything together. So conflict does happen in this movie, but all movies, they do require conflict for character growth and development. And these issues, they don't linger too long besides Todd being the worst as well as Voldemort being the worst I ask himself. You, uh, is it true what you said about Calvin's uh, sneakers? I guess. I guess. Don't I guess me, you idiot. So now we got our main Todd and Voldemort moment trying to steal the sneakers so Calvin can't leave and burning Murph's dead mom's photo. That is so cruel. That is so sad. Also, he could go bet with these evil looking bookies. This movie's emotional and it's good. I love that. So we start to get to our main building conflict moment. We get Run, Calvin realizing he needs his sneakers. Oh no! What are you gonna do with the game starts in 20 minutes? Wait, I have an idea. I'll meet you ASAP. Coming back to the home, giving a nice speech, getting everybody riled up, starting to actually tie up Voldemort, which is insane. <laughs> and turning Todd good. That's the greatest thing about this movie, is Todd is redeemable. Even though some things he does is really bad, he didn't burn Merce's dead mom's photo. He didn't do that. He wasn't accomplice, but he didn't do that. So now we get a classic movie trope again. You got these badass bookies chasing scooter kids. And Murph gets hit by a car, but boom, redemption moment. We love that for Murph. So now we get Calvin running in. Last minute. 
Fourth quarter, down by 20 something points. Calvin's got to put the shoes on. Calvin's got to perform. VC is stoked to see him. And like I said before, following a ton of tropes, late show up, Tracy standing up for him. It's just like the Rudy moment with everybody laying their jerseys out. But that's why we watch sports movies. Oh my. Nobody shows up after three quarters in place. Sit on the bench. Wait a minute, Coach, you gotta play cow. No. Just listen to me for a minute, okay? Now, if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't be here in the first place. Now, listen, we can still do this, but we're gonna need him. Now, come on, we started as a team, let's finish as a team. Calvin starts going off. Buckets, buckets, they're making their comeback. And then the MJ shoe rips. Uh-oh. That is where all of Calvin's skills were. Psych, it's all inside of your heart, Calvin. It wasn't the sneakers allowing you to jump 10 feet into the air, it was you. Corny, yes, but I don't hate it. We still see stuff like this all the time. Like Mike, pump fake VC under the legs, passes it instead of shooting, and the Knights win. Now this is the fun thing also. Calvin goes back to being a kid, and then we get it all tied up neatly with not only Calvin being adopted by Tracy, but Murph comes along for the ride. Where's Reg? Who knows? At least we get to see Murph, Tracy, and Bow Wow, I mean Calvin, live together happily ever after. So rewatching this movie, <laughs> it stands up. It is so entertaining throughout. There's not really a slow moment. You have Voldemort being absolutely horribly evil the whole time. You also have Todd with a slight redemption arc, but the best thing is seeing the relationship grow between Tracy and Calvin with the intertwined footage of all of this quality basketball content. But still, it all comes down to seeing how it's aged. And I think it's aged great. Two, I have two thumbs up right now for how well this movie's aged. If you have an hour and 30 minutes, it's short too. Go watch it. You're not gonna regret it. But thank you again for watching my second video here. Like I said, we're not just doing games, we're doing movies, and we got a TV show coming next Friday, so stay tuned for that. But all I gotta say to you is keep aging. Peace!